towards the opening of the season on uh, Thursday night, a football Friday, as always, with everything that goes with that. And then uh, we'll be back Sunday with the Football Sunday show after last year's hiatus where we didn't do the show because we weren't going to finish the season uh, and having left in the middle of December when we did. So for the first time in 30 years, we didn't do a football show last year. We're back doing the show this year. Uh, on the app exclusively. So you got to get the app to get the football show. The Football Sunday show will run 9 to 12 as always with all the regular stuff, all the same people, Doc O'Brien, Schrager, everybody, all the stuff we do, two-minute drill, everything we do, we'll do the same way. Uh, but it will just be on mikeson.com. It will be on the app, uh, the Mike's On app that you can get at mikeson.com or uh, at the App Store or Google Play so you can get it all the regular places. Uh, so uh, the app is available, and we do run the video of this show every day, the audio and video of this program every day on the, uh, on the app. And we will also have uh, plenty of other things that we're going to have on there weekly, including the uh, college football show on Saturday, uh, the three-hour football Sunday show on Sunday, uh, Brad Thomas will give, be giving you picks uh, from different tracks around the country. Just really three key picks that he likes each week, whatever track it might be. It might be Aqueduct, it might be Del Mar, it might be Gulfstream, could be anywhere. doesn't matter. Now you can bet every track anywhere. No matter where you bet anyway, you can bet every track anyway. Uh, so uh, it's not limited just to the, uh, say, New York track or whether it be coming up Belmont now that Saratoga's closed or – uh, Monmouth could be any track, could be anywhere, wherever the big ones are, whether it could be Kentucky Downs right now, it could be, you know, Churchill Downs, it could be Gulfstream, it could be any of the California tracks, it could be anywhere. So um, that will be all year. Each weekend he will have picks for you there. Uh, and everything else that we'll do, including all the different things we'll do around all the big games before, after, or beyond before the games, sometimes during the games, after the games, halftime, whatever, at mikeson.com. So you can get the app right now. We uh, started with the app on the day of Bar A, so it's been open since then. We did we did stuff periodically over the vacation week. We did a show every couple of days, uh, and now we'll be on there every day starting today and be on there all around, and we'll have an alert that says Mike, if you – our subscriber will give you an alert when I'm be coming up in just a minute or two. It'll say Mike's on in 60 seconds or two minutes, whatever we uh, have with the alert, which we're working on right now. And we'll have that ready for you in a couple of days. So you can get it, at, uh, as we said, at mikeson.com or at Apple or at Google, wherever you want to get it. You can get it right now. It's available uh, monthly or uh, the yearly subscription. And we got a lot of good things we have coming up on there and a bunch of different stuff that we have planned, different events and stuff that we'll talk about in the uh, weeks and months to come. But uh, we're looking forward to it, and it's worked out very well so far. We thank everybody who's already uh, joined us, and we're looking for a lot more of you to do the same, and we're uh, off and running with that. Uh, and we have some other things in relationships we'll be talking about, one of them, DraftKings, which is also... Uh, one of our partners and will be with us on a variety of things, including this Sunday. There's a DraftKings event, which I'll be at in New Jersey. We'll tell you more about that. So that's coming up too. And obviously you folks in Jersey can wager uh, at the DraftKings app or on at the DraftKings Sportsbook on the app uh, right now and can do that for college football or the NFL. So uh, a lot of interesting things going on and things we'll get to in the days and weeks to come. As we said, Patino coming up at 4. And Pat Sherman coming up at 5. Uh, we have a busy week, a lot of guests, a lot of things we have to do this week. First, let's get some thoughts here on what's going on, either the football or the Yankees, whatever. Sonny and Malvern, what's up, Sonny? Hey, Mike, I'll be quick. I know you're busy, so three quick points. Yes. Um, you're right, Alonzo did earn it. The fans do deserve it. We set through a lot of inept offense, so it would have been nice. Yeah, it's just it doesn't make any sense. You know what, listen, I understand they didn't want to put him on the floor. I understand the reasons. Bruce was a reason. The 40-man roster was a reason. None of it, to me, was a big enough reason not to give the fans a look at this kid this September. And I just think it would have been a, a wise thing to do. That's all. I agree. I just fans, I think you did find your quarterback. And I give you credit, Mike. The first time I mentioned, uh, heard of him was through you. And finally, my big blue team. Mike, it's ironic that fans still kill Eli. And I think he's the least of the problems. 
Everyone knows about their defensive problems, and I beat them the secondary, you know, safety and uh, defensive back and also the, you know, injury to Vernon. But, Mike, do we know what this offensive run blocking is going to be? They have three teams. The defensive fronts are ferocious. First three games. Do I think they're okay. I think they're going to be okay on the left side. I think they, you will see them in short yardage run to the left. I don't know what they're going to make out of the right side of the line. I think the right side of the line is one of the – I think there's two things – that really scare me about the job. Oh, I, I would even say three right now. Uh, one is the right side of the line. Two is whether or not they have anything that even resembles a pass rush. And three is the overall depth of their secondary, which does not look great. So from that, those are the things that I'd be concerned about right now. Now, Jacksonville comes in. It's going to be a very interesting game. Jacksonville is having their own problems offensively. We know how good they are defensively. It's no secret what they're going to come in to do. They're going to come in. They're going to get after Eli, and they're going to try and run the football. We know what they're going to do. We know who they are and what they're going to do. Uh, We'll see how the Giants handle it. And it is an enormous game for the Giants, absolutely. And considering the schedule, it is imperative that they win this first game. Their schedule gets so nasty if they don't win this first game. It really does. Because they win that first game, and you can somehow split to the other two games in Texas, and you're 2-1 and one getting ready for the Saints. You don't want to be 0-3 getting ready for the Saints. Saints are going to be really good. I actually think the, the teams in the NFC that right now, if you put a gun to my head and say, who's going to Super Bowl, I would tell you right now that there's three t- Really, I, I guess I could say four. See, I don't think any of the NFC East teams right now look to me to be Super Bowl teams. I think the Super Bowl teams in the NFC right now are either going to be Minnesota Green Bay, Atlanta New Orleans. Those, to me, are the teams, if you put a gun to my head, I think Falcons are the best team. This is it for the Falcons, though. This is the last dance for this group. And I'm telling you, it's time for the coach. It's time for the offensive coordinator. They have the talent on both sides of the ball. This is a now team. This team will start to go backwards if they don't win this year. But this is, right now, I think they still have the best personnel. Dan and Poughkeepsie, what's up, Dan? Thanks, Mike, for taking a call. Yeah, what's up? You know, the Batman's 38 years old. You know, he's pitching like a 38-year-old, too. He looks overweight, out of shape, and everything else. No, that's who he is. Wait, he's been the same Sabathia. He's not, you know, listen, he's been the same Sabathia for years. To me, I got more out of him the last couple of years than I could have ever expected. He's passed his his warranty. He's passed what he agreed to give the Yankees. It's not about Sabathia anymore. So I, I have not relied on him myself. He has surprised me in the last two years with how he's pitched. I don't trust him. I haven't trusted him for two years, but I never trusted him. So I don't expect anything out of Sabathia anymore. We're going to bring up Sheffield. Why aren't they bringing him up? Well, you know, listen, they haven't brought Sheffield up because it tells you, it tells me that they just don't think he's ready. Otherwise, they would have brought him up. I, I, I really believe that they don't think he's ready, that he doesn't have the whole package yet. You've heard there's not enough difference between the changeup and, and the fastball. There, there needs to be more of a variance. They're working on different stuff as far as that. There's different things with control issues. You hear all this different stuff. The bottom line is I don't think they think he's been ready. Yankees right now do not have a lot of pitching. Yankees right now do not have a great bullpen. Yankees right now do not have a good defense in the infield. Yankees right now do not have a big-time lineup with the guys missing and the guys who are slumping. They're not a very good team right now. They've had a good season. They're not a very good team right now. They've got to put it back together. Luckily, they have uh, enough of a cushion that they will be able to put it back together. But if they play the wild card game tomorrow, I think they lose. Sully in Holtzville, what's up, Sully? Hey, Mike, how are you? Good. Listen, Mike, uh, I couldn't agree with more with everything you said there about the Yankees in, in your in your opening, and, and I won't rehash it. Uh, I'd like to make a David Wright point, but first of all, without the, without judging the lineup, it's the sum of, of what he produces is gone way beyond his, his what he produces, what they're missing. And if it weren't for the two kids being in a lineup, This really would be a nightmare situation. The two most important players on their team are Judge and Didi, and they've missed both of them badly. 
Yes, and the two kids have produced way above. What way, they could have way, 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 way above, and Andujar especially. But his defense is atrocious. Yes, maybe, maybe he's you know without getting off off subject. I really want to get to David Wright. Uh, maybe he's an answer next year, first base, if they. If well, they or maybe he, yeah, or, you know, the Yankees. Unfortunately, you know what they're coming up with a lot of DHs. Yeah, 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 you know, you're not far off on that. Listen, David Wright. Now, knowing how the Mets have a penchant for not spending money and and don't want to beat up on them because they do have a big payroll this year, uh, David Wright, if he gets activated for one day this month. He has. They have. They lose the insurance of three three million plus for this month. Plus, the clock starts again for them. The first sixty days of twenty nineteen are not covered by insurance if he plays one day this month. So basically, if they get him in the lineup for one day this month, it's going to cost them over nine million dollars. I can't fathom the Mets taking a shot and activating him when he hasn't produced in single A. I'd love to see him. For the Mets fans, say come out and play for a week and say his goodbyes because I can't see him as a viable major leaguer any longer, especially next year. So to actually give him a nice, fond farewell, it's going to cost the Mets over $9.2 million. It, it could. And it doesn't have to next it. year. It could cost them. I think there has to be a happy medium here. There has to be a meeting of the minds, and the meeting of the minds is this, okay? Let me have this. Let me have my week here. And then I'll work with you on the rest of the contract. I think well, yeah, that, that, yeah, that, I still don't see the insurance. Well, no, yeah, but that's the part. But but he can make good on the other end by just being reasonable. Okay, so Understood. let him have his week here. Let him understand that this is the he end. De- he deserves it. Yes, give he's, him he's his week. Guy. Listen, I think give. He's a very classy guy. He's done everything right. Let him have his week here. Let him have his goodbye week or month. Let him play here as much as he. He's free to be in the lineup any day he wants to be in the lineup. The rest of the season at home. That, any day he wants to be in the lineup, he's in the lineup. That's all, all there is to it. But here's the bottom line: We'll take the the Mets take the hit this year. He gives them. A break on the rest of the contract. That's how it works. That's the that's the equitable way it works, and let him go out the right way. That's that. I think that's the fair thing. He doesn't have a lot of baseball left. I think he's been. I think now he's probably been proven to him that he doesn't have a lot of baseball left. So let him have whatever he wants here. He wants a day. He wants a week. He wants you know whatever it is that he doesn't embarrass himself and. He can go out the right way. They have a day for him. He gets to play the you know maybe three games in a row over a weekend, and the last day they have a day for him. They fill if Med fans do the right thing and fill the stadium for him, and then he says his goodbyes, and he gives them a break on the what's left on the contract after this year, months. What's left after this year? I don't remember off the top of my head. There's money, but I don't remember how much. Whatever it is, he gives them a break on that end. That's all. So that makes it up to him. Ron in Oyster Bay. What's up, Ron? Hey, Mike. How you doing? Good. Good. I'm a Mets fan, but I was listening to John and Susan yesterday doing the game, and when Familia pitched, um, after the second walk, Susan says, I don't understand it. He gets his first two outs quickly, and then you can't find home plate. And I'm thinking to myself, well, that's Familia. Well, that is Familia. And not only that, Sanchez bailed him out. I mean, he would have walked Familia, too. He would have walked Sanchez also. He was about to walk San- Sanchez. Swung on a two-one pitch that was not nearly a strike. He would have struck. He would have walked Sanchez also uh, if 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 uh, Sanchez had allowed him. Familia was about to walk. The, was about to walk the bases loaded. No question. Absolutely was. Yeah. So I mean, that's familiar. You're absolutely right. That that has been familiar all along. That that is familiar. Ruben and Queens. What's up, Ruben? Hi, Mike. Uh, welcome back. Thank you. Uh, two things. If you take the Yankees, I'm going to give you Sanchez. Figure he's out. For, he's not going to do anything this year. You got Stanton, Judge, Didi, and the two kids. What's Who the point? Baseball. Has got those five guys when they're healthy, and they're going to get healthy in a couple of weeks. Well, you don't know that. First of all, you don't know that any. First of all, you don't know that Sanchez or Judge is going to get healthy again. You don't know if either one. His Sanchez isn't hitting since he came back. And you, don't no, know if, you and you don't know if Judge is going to get healthy the rest of the year. And there are, there are teams that have guys like that in the middle of their lineup. Look at the Red Sox lineup. Look at the guys in the Red Sox lineup and tell me that you don't have guys there with Betts hitting, 330, Betts hitting 338 
and then you have Benatendi, who the Yankees uh, don't ever want to see. You have Martinez right behind them, who is uh, right now vying for a triple crown and is a legitimate triple crown winner at 336, leading the league in RBIs, and I think he's one homer off the lead. So that's one, two, three right there. Put Bogarts behind them, sprinkle in what they have after that. Now, they might be one home run guy short, but they got guys hitting 335, 338, and hitting 290 and 295. I mean, it's a little different. They have more speed. They got more everyday hitters. They don't have as much home run power, but they got better hitters at the top of the lineup than the Yankees do. Rick in Tampa, what's up, Rick? Hey, Mike, welcome back. What's happening? You know what? I, I, I mean, it's got to be it's probably a, a, a week in a row that the Yankee starters have given up a run or two in the first inning. They very, they've the given hole. up runs in the first inning almost every game. You're right. Every game. And, and, and that's got to stop, too. But I, I got a question for you because I think your rosy picture of possibly catching the Red Sox is totally blown out. I think the, well, no, no, they, can, that, they can't I, catch the Red Sox. That's no, I know they can't. Yeah. I'm not worried that uh, they lose these next six games in a row. They, they're going to. Jeopardize well, the, the only thing is, uh, listen, I, they can't lose the second wild card because they got a nine and a half game lead. So, uh, today, right. Okay. So, but they could, could okay. they lose the the home game in the wild card? They could. They I don't could think do they, that. I don't think they will. Oakland's got a lot of games left with, with, with Seattle and with Houston. So okay. I, I, okay. I don't think they will, you know, but okay. could well, they, about, they could, or, that's, they could. But they could. And I'm worried about that, but I think this with their starting pitching with the next round with the uh, well, next He's up because I'm telling you, he does not look good. And Lynn, would you put somebody else in? Uh, will you start to experiment with another starter? I mean, God forbid, bring Gray back for one shot. I mean, I mean. Listen, you have, you have, you know, you have. You're only looking for one guy. You have, you, you right now can start. You can start Severino, Tanaka, and Hap in the three playoff games. Mm-hmm. You just need you to win games now, though. Right. Well, you don't really have to win a lot of games now. You don't have to win a lot of games now. You pretty much can coast the rest of the way. Here's the one thing. Oakland in a one-game playoff has got a terrific bullpen. They have not lost a game after the seventh inning, so the Yankees know going in. It's pretty much a six-inning game against the A's. Now, the A's don't have a big-time starting pitcher. They don't have a guy who's lights out as a starting pitcher, but their bullpen is really good. So you know you got to have a lead in that game. You can't fool around. And that that team is a formidable team. They're not a bad team right now. They're playing really well. They're playing very confidently. They don't push over. And as far as seeing Houston, you don't want any part of seeing Houston in a one-game playoff. I don't think you will, but you don't want any part of seeing Houston. Back after this.